slow that we had until the start. No, we don't coach. Okay, once again, a reminder that K State locker room is also open. Uh, we'll remain open until 10 17. Uh, we have Coach here. We'll start with an opening statement from him. Then uh, we will go to questions for the student athletes. We'll dismiss them and then we'll do questions for Coach. So, Coach, if you want to get us started. Uh, yeah, first of all, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, in, in the midst of uh, probably one of the toughest things that, you know, experience with these guys, um, uh, if we can't be grateful in these times, then all the love and joy that we talk about is, is fraud and we're not frauds. And so um, I want to give um, FAU and Coach uh, a lot of credit. They did a great job. Um, they were tough. They were together. They made big shots. Um, you know, you, you have to, they, they won the game. Okay, they won the game. And so um, this hurts right now, uh, but I wouldn't trade these guys for 10 players. 10 others or 20 others. I wouldn't trade them if anything in the world. And so, so, so very thankful for the, the fun and the ride that we've had this year. We have senior guard Marquise Noel. We have junior forward Naquan Tomlin. We'll take questions for either of them. Once again, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over and we'll just give your name and affiliation before asking your question of either of the student athletes up here in the front row on the right side on the aisle. Scott Scottfritch and K-State Athletics. Marquise, uh, coach was just talking about being grateful. I'm just curious how grateful you are for this ride that you were on. Um, I'm very grateful, uh, man. You know, I had a tremendous year with my teammates and my coaching staff. Um, had a lot of fun. Um, just looking, at, looking back at how hard we worked um, to get to this point. Um, man, I'm just thankful for the journey. I'm thankful for my teammates and everybody behind the scenes. I mean, I wouldn't want it any other way. We'll stay on the other side of the aisle, it's just uh, same row. For Marquise and Naquan, I wonder if you can just describe what you were, how the play was unfolding on the last sequence and that feeling when, when you heard the buzzer and, and you just knew you weren't going to be able to get, get the shot. So Marquise first and then Naquan. Um, you know, I was trying to get Ish a shot. Um, coach wanted, you know, Ish to set the screen. And I waved it off because I felt like, you know, on the right side of the court, that's where Ish hits most of his shots. Um, and they closed out hard to him. Um, and he didn't get off a shot. I mean, when that final buzzer, you know, hit, you know, it was a little, it was a, it was a little tough um, because, you know, I love these guys so much that I want to continue to keep playing, you know, for the rest of my life with them. I mean, you know, just uh, it, it was tough. But, you know, I'm truly honored. I'm truly blessed um, and grateful to have, you know, a family, you know. Naquan? Uh, I'm thankful as well. You know, uh, we had a hell of a season. Uh, you know, I'm just glad that we made it this far, even though this is not what we, you know, wanted to, what we wanted to stop at, but I'm just grateful, you know, that I'm here with my teammates. On the aisle toward the back there on the right side. Ian O'Connor, New York Post. Marquise, just as a New Yorker who never got a chance to play in this building in the past, what does it mean to you to finish with two dominant performances in the Garden? Um, I'm just, you know, I'm happy and grateful that I got the opportunity to play in Madison Square. Um, I always dreamed of something like this, um, just playing here, being here, you know, uh, playing my heart out. You know, I feel like I gave my heart and soul to this game for these past couple games. Um, because I wanted to see these guys, you know, win and smile and know what the standard is for winning. Um, we have a, a younger group of guys that we have in that locker room, and the standard is hard to win. I mean, winning isn't easy. Um, and to see that, you know, we, we made a deep tournament run uh, with that, with that uh, young core group. Um, I'm just excited to see, you know, where they come um, years ahead. But, you know, it's just a blessing, man. Um, I gave my heart and soul to this university, to this team. Um, I, I maximized everything I had, you know, inside of me to, to see these guys happy. We'll come back up front on the other side, Vahe. Marquise, when you hit that three, you banked it in to make it 63-57. Uh, 
It, did you have some sense like, okay, things are just going to fall for us? I mean, obviously, it wasn't like you thought that was it. I don't mean that. But did you have some sense like, you know, we're, we're rolling the way we want to roll into the last eight, nine minutes? Yeah, I feel like uh, we, we, that shot, you know, gave us a little momentum. But I don't feel like we got, you know, the defensive stops that we really needed. I don't feel like we got key rebounds that we really needed. And give a lot of credit to FAU for getting every single 50-50 ball. I mean, there were, there was guys diving on the floor, jumping out of bounds, um, crashing on a on a free throw, you know. So, you know, give a lot of credit to them. Uh, I'm sure they're happy, um, and I wish them much success. We'll do two more for the student athletes. We'll start here on the end. Go ahead. Hey guys, sorry things didn't go your way tonight. Jeff Maglichetti with SI.com, All Knicks. Uh, when a guy like Keontae Johnson has to sit out the final 12 minutes of the half, it usually could spell doom for a team, but you guys kept things very manageable to a four or six point deficit by the end of the half. So from a player's perspective, what worked for you guys during that period and what allowed you to keep pace with the Owls during that time? Start with Naquan and then we'll go to Marquise. Uh, I feel like you know we tried to you know uh, stay together and you know just try to keep uh, trying to trying to get stops and for me trying to make the right plays and uh, you know just trying to just really just trying to stay together you know and stay positive. Marquise, uh, it's always tough when you know your your leading scorer is out um, with, with foul trouble, um, but like Naquan said, we try to stay together. Uh, we try to get easy buckets, um, and you know I feel like in the first half we wasn't playing our game how we usually play our game. Um, and I kind of think that's where they got out in transition and got some easy buckets uh, because we, we was a little flustered on the a, on a, uh, offensive end. But, you know, they got every 50-50 ball. It didn't come down to anything else but, you know, them playing harder, them wanting, wanting it more. Um, so you got to give a lot of credit to them. Go to the other side of the room, uh, standing toward the end of the aisle. Go ahead. Tom Marion with AP Radio for the players. Can you express the disappointment of coming so close to the Final Four but not getting there? Start with Naquan and then Marquise. We can't express it. I mean, you know, it's a tough feeling. Um, I mean, you know, our guys gave, gave it all. You know, coaching staff came up with a tremendous game plan. Um, we fell short. I mean, it happens in basketball. I mean, you know, these guys are going to work hard this offseason, and I'm pretty sure they're going to come out with a chip on their shoulder next year. So, But we couldn't explain it. Okay. Marquise, Naquan, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. you taking the time. Congratulations on a great season. Once again, K-State Locker Room will be open until 9-19. I made a mistake earlier saying 10. Uh, it'll be 9:19 that the locker room will close. We have questions for Coach Tang. Please raise your hand. We will get the microphone to you. We'll start on the aisle in the back row on the right side. Uh, Coach Zach Deloach with the Manhattan Mercury. Uh, did did you feel like uh, FAU did anything specific to kind of neutralize Keontae, or was it just luck of the draw with those fouls? <laughs> um, Keontae played 18 minutes, and that's why he was neutralized. And then uh, wh uh, what was your plan for, for dealing with Vlad Golden and especially um, uh, offense, or limiting their offensive rebounds and second chance points? You know, um, re rebounding has been an issue for us all year. And uh, we tried to make it tough for him. We tried to front him. They did a great job of um, lobbing it over to him. And then so then we played behind. He did a good job of, of scoring some buckets. I, I, th I thought. I didn't think he was the, the difference. I didn't think he could score 20, and so I wasn't concerned with it. I was con more concerned with the other guys. And, um, and so, but the other guys delivered too. Other side of the aisle, two rows up, go ahead. Zach Brazil in New York Post. What, what makes them tough? You know, they don't really have a, a so-called star, um, but what is it about them that's tough to deal with? Well, you know, when you, when you draw up plays with X's and O's, right, on some teams, uh, all the O's don't have to be guarded. So you can, like, put your X's in the right spot to, to make it hard for the team to score an offense. Every one of his O's can score the ball. And that's what makes it hard to guard. 
We'll stay and on it, this it doesn't matter if they can score 30. They can all shoot. They can all dribble. You can all pass. And that, that, that puts your defense in a bind. Stay on the aisle up here in front. Jerome, from what you said to us, you thought it was pretty important to have perspective on the, the meaning of the season in this game. How, how did you get that across to the players in the locker room? Did you, did you try to focus on that right away or, or on, on the feeling of the loss and, and the season ending? How did you try to treat that? Yeah, you know, um, when this happens, this is the third time I've lost in the Elite Eight. And you can sit around and mope and cry about it, or you can really uh, – just think about the love and the joy that you've had uh, through the season. And, you know, like, like winners keep their heads up. They don't drop their heads. And so our guys were not going to walk off the floor with their heads down. And then uh, we're going to approach, like, like tough things are going to happen in our life, and we don't get to wallow in it. Okay, we got to keep moving forward. And, and this is more of a lesson for them of becoming men than it is about basketball. Uh, we'll stay on this side, third row, uh, fourth row on the end. Go ahead. Coach, thank you. Uh, Jeff Magley, Chetty, SI.com, all Knicks. Um, you know, this was a team of transfers built by so many uh, built by so many assets from the transfer portal, including yourself from Baylor, as a matter of fact. So what was the key to creating such a cohesive, strong unit with, through so many different backgrounds? And, and, when, and when you look at t- – and how did this team kind of emulate some of, you, some of the teams, some of the winning teams you had over at Baylor? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. Um, I'm going to say that like what we looked for was winners and uh, we had we wanted to find guys who had won in their past whether it's high school state championships or in college because whenever anybody wins the last game at some point in time to win the last game of the year you've got to go through some adversity and you're going to be down in a game in a huddle and you got to and you know what it takes to to come back and win that game. And so having a group of guys, I think I have more than eight state championships on the team from, from high school players. And then college guys who have won, uh, you know, in the NCAA, I wasn't just looking for talent. I was looking for, for Dean. And, and all these dudes were, they're incredible human beings, right? And they learned each other's stories. And because they learned each other's stories, they could empathize with them. They could, you know, understand. And, and when things didn't go well, they were there for each other. And so, and, and Marquise, Noel really spearheaded the whole thing in building the team chemistry by, you know, having bowling nights and movie nights and all the different things that they did uh, together uh, to build the chemistry that we needed. We'll go one row back. Uh, Roger. Roger Rubin from New York <clears throat> Newsday. Coach, in, in the changing landscape of college basketball, it seems like many of the strongest teams have a big component of players who have transferred in, yours included. FAU isn't really like that. The nucleus of their team is like guys who have been playing together for three years. Do you believe that there is still a place in the upper echelons of college basketball for teams that exist like that? I I definitely do. My good friend Paul Mills, who just took the Wichita State job, was at Oral Roberts, and his team won 30 games this year with guys who stayed. you got to have the right environment. When we was at Baylor, um, the national average in college was 43%. I think it's higher than that now. At Baylor, our, our, our average was 16%. And the reason uh, it was so low is because, one, we told the truth in recruiting, and two, um, we loved the guys when they were on campus, right? And uh, we showed them that we cared about what was important to them and then how what was important to them, if they were willing to sacrifice a little bit, it would uh, allow them, us to achieve our goal as a team and them as individual achieve their goals. I think you see that with Marquise Noel this year and Keontae Johnson. Okay, um, I think Keese is the best point guard in America should win Naismith. I think uh, Keontae, when he's allowed to play more than 18 minutes, is the best uh, wing in the country and should win the Naismith. Okay, but uh, what, what uh, Coach May Dusty's doing is being able to get guys to redshirt and then come along and, and see how they're going to fit in and he's telling them their plan it definitely and I, I hope to do that too like I got a group of guys that we redshirted this year and so next year will be their second year in the program and then the third year in the program they're going to be able to help us win my, my, my job next year is to make sure in the second year of the program that I help them see the big picture and that they're willing to come back and, and be there in the third year we'll do one final question for coach it's in the back on the right side go ahead young man 
Killing Johnson Sports Illustrated Kids. Coach Tang, congrats on a great season. So your team has great team chemistry both on and off the court. Win or lose, do you attribute to that team chemistry with your leadership and coaching style? I, I attribute it to our staff and the environment that we have, the culture that we have within up and down the office. Like if you walked up and down the hallways of our office, like you would think we're having a party. Right, every day. There's a lot of laughing. There's a, a just, just, just a great time together. And I think our guys see that. And it, they learn more from what they see than what we say. And then they learn to emulate that. And so uh, I believe I, I have the best staff in America. And the culture that we have up and down our office is a place that anybody would want to work at. Thank Coach, you. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Right. Congratulations on a Thank great season. Once again, K-State Locker Room is open for another nine minutes. We will have FAU up here in just a few. We have been given the East Regional All-Tournament team, if you have not gotten that handout. East Regional All-Tournament team, A.J. Hogard from Michigan State, Marquise Noel from Kansas State, Keontae Johnson from Kansas State, John L. Davis from FAU, and Vlad Golden from FAU. The most outstanding player for the East Regional was Marquise Noel of Kansas State. 